Winterberg in Germany, the winter wonderland of the Hochsauerland, and the final event of this World Cup weekend, the Blue Ribbon event, it is four-man bobsleigh. Welcome back, everybody, to our coverage from the track here in Winterberg as we get into the second and deciding heat of the first race of the four-man bobsleigh World Cup and the European Championships. Well, after our first heat, we've got a very entertaining looking podium. Yesterday, Benny Meyer and Marcus Sammer took European bronze with a third place finish in the two man race. They also lie third in the four man encounter. 34 hundredths off the medals and a tenth of a second away from a potential silver. Justin Cripps. The Canadians and Americans racing in Europe for the very first time in the World Cup this season. And Cripps is back with a bang. Second place after the first of our two heats. Canada haven't had a medal on this track in men's four-man for over a decade. But our race leader, as yesterday, heading the field after the first heat, Francesco Friedrich. This time, the advantage is substantial. A quarter of a second ahead of his closest rival, and potentially heading for his first ever four-man yeah. European Championship gold medal. Seems incredible, actually, with everything that Friedrich has achieved in 45 World Cup wins, that none of them have been a four-man European gold. He has had four-man European medals, Two silvers and a bronze, but no gold medal. Justin Cripps lies second, Benny Meyer in third, ahead of Rostislav Gajtukovic, and then Christoph Harfer, and the four-time consecutive European Championship gold medalist in four-man, Hansi Lochner, only sixth. Well, this Winterberg track, 1,330 metres, opened in the early 70s as a permanent facility, but they've been racing sledges down this valley since last century, well actually the century before last now. Oscar's Melbardis with a start record dates back to 2014, probably not going to get to that today. This little dink at zero can cost all of the speed you put into the sled before you even get to the gentle left-hander at turn one. Turn two, the Omega curve. Speed still fairly gentle, around 40 kilometers an hour. And then out of three, climbing uphill over the brow in four. Little gentle descent into five and listen. Hear the wind noise increase the rush as we go down through five, six, and then into the Chrysler seven. We accelerate first from corner five and then out of seven, corner eight, and then out of nine. This is where we start to build speed properly. Little dink in ten, corner eleven, the big right hander. Crucial exit here if you're not going to bounce off all the walls in the lower labyrinth. Down into turn 14, the zeal curve. A long uphill gradient to the finish line. Track record set by Nico Walter, Andy Bredow, Marco Hubenbecker, and Christian Poser in March 2015. And that was the World Championships. Well, Francesco Friedrich, Torsten Margis, Ben Coquel, and the rest of the Canadians doing their warm up. Hansi Lochner with a lot to think about. Lochner, the last man to win in a four-man in World Cup racing on this track. He took his fourth European Championship gold medal in the second of the four-man races last season. There's Seaman Friedley. He's got work to do as well. The two Swiss sleds underperformed a little, I think. Patrick Baumgartner, though, the Italian, had a very good first heat, and he could be an interesting sled to watch. Our 16 sleds go in reverse order at their first heat performance. The Americans off first. New boy Jeff Garbois, his first weekend racing in Europe in the World Cup ahead of Cody Bascu. Then Mikael Volk, Simon Friedley, Mihai Tentea in a tight battle with Roman Heinrich, Dominic Dvorak, Ivo de Brown, and Patrick Baumgartner. Alexei Stulnev, the second of the Russians. And then watch what happens when Hansi Lochner, if he gets a second run, a second good run, does he get a shot at the medals? 16 sleds in our start. Second heat, race one of the BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh World Cup. First time ever racing in Europe at any level. Jeff Godbois with Adrian Adams. New boy Boone Niederhofer making his World Cup debut. And Christopher Horn, who was on the two-man sled yesterday. Five seventeen, the first heat for Jeff Godbois. 5.19 in the second, start record is a 4.98, and that has stood since 2014. 
Side handle didn't clip back in properly. Just hanging out in the breeze, that won't help. Shouldn't hinder the sled. If it does have to touch any of the sidewalls, it will get snapped back in. Crew with their heads buried between their knees. It's aerodynamics as well as safety. 96.6 kilometers an hour through the Chrysler. That is just under 60 miles an hour, 59 and a half miles an hour. And for Godbois, first time ever on this Winterberg track, having to divide his six learning runs between two man and four man. Glad to get down with the crew in one piece, 55-17. So a little improvement on the drive after his first heat. And he was actually only 800s behind teammate Cody Baskew. Baskew has raced here before. And Baskew in a sled that he knows as well. So Jeff Gabois, first man down in the second heat. This is the five to six transition. Got a little squirrely through there. And out of corner 11, you don't want to let the pressure take you too high up on the outrun, on the outlet of the turn little higher than ideal and that leaves you late into 12 and 13 and those transitions come at you pretty quickly off 13 late later latest gets away with it though into the finish corner every day is a school day in this sport never more so for jeff garbois every track he races on now for this season will be new to him USA lead, USA next up, Cody Baskew has Blaine McConnell, Carlo Valdez, and Kyle Wilcox with him. Cody Baskew grew up sliding Kiwi Bob Slays in Lake Placid. He spent a lot of his life on ice in this US built sled, 519 at the getaway, same as Gabois, so he keeps his 800s of a second advantage from the first heat. Both crews started 517 in the first heat. That 800s remains exactly where it was. Cody has got history on this track, raced here in the World Cup before. Best here, an 11th place finish, but that was back in December 2017. I can't even remember what I was wearing in 2017, never mind what I was doing. Still in the lead, 900s in front. Out to 1500s now, a little bit of a tidier run down through the labyrinth, gives him more speed at the line, at a quarter second advantage at the finish. So 55-0-1. He was 1,300s behind his closest rival ahead of him. I wonder if that'll be enough maybe to pick off Mikel Vogt or Seaman Friedley. They were only separated by a hundredth of a second. Well, Cody back racing in Europe for the first time in a couple of seasons. Again, although he knows the track, it all takes time to come back. Knowing it, getting down and getting down quickly, that's a very different thing. Again, that handle didn't quite come in there. So not the tidiest of loads from the crew. Or whatever else, whatever the result is, maybe not what they were hoping for, but they are at least back racing. And that, more than anything else, is what they wanted before Christmas. From two US sleds, we now head to two Swiss sleds, both of whom I think will be a little disappointed at being where they are in 14th and 13th. They are 100th apart having started 100th apart. First up, Mikel Vogt with Silvio Weber, Cyril Bieri and Oliver Giga. All three brakemen have run in the two-man, but look, he's pushing the cow old school because that start handle that normally comes out of the cow clearly did not. So instead of 5.25, it's 5.33. Eugenio Monti was the man who first introduced a handle for the driver to push on on the old two-man sleds that just had a little bikini fairing at the front, everybody pushed on the cow, and then Monty, as he grew older, decided he needed a bit of help, added a push handle. Everybody complained, but discovered there was no rule against it. And where one leads, usually the others follow. 700s behind Cody Baskew. Don't forget, he was only 800s in front from the first heat. 
And the gap is back down to 400s. Better speed than Bascu. This could be very close at the line to the 100. But he is tied. So Cody Bascu moves up one. He'll be no worse than 14. Well, only 16 sleds in our heat. There were 17 on the start list. Great Britain's Brad Hall, his brakeman Nick Gleason, twanged his hamstring in the second two-man push yesterday. They don't have an alternate. Their alternates, Sam, uh, uh, is put, uh, their two alternates are flying out next week for Sam Moritz. Well, there you can see pushing on the cow, not the most efficient way. And it doesn't help you get in either. You don't have that lever of the push bar to help you vault into the sled. So double jeopardy for Mikel Vogt. He started a long way behind, managed to claw their way back to finish equal with Cody Bascu. Lamindeen was also hoping to be here for Great Britain. His flights, his team's flights were cancelled to get back to Europe after Christmas. They are training in Innsbruck at the moment. Hope to be in Samaritz next week. Also training in Innsbruck in four-man Jamaica. Seaman Friedley then, 100th ahead of Mikel Vogt from the first of our two heats. Adrian Fessler behind in, Dominic Schlepfer and Roger Leimgruber making his first start. You can see there the thin Lycra suit has been ripped by jumping into the sled. It wasn't the Bregman spikes. They've got the man at three, Dominic Schlepfer. So got torn getting into the sled. Well, they have an advantage now of 1,300s. Should not give this away. They started 400s quicker. The sled in front of them, Romania's Mihai Tentea. Only 400s in front at the end of the first heat. So every hundredth in the start can count. Little squirrely five to six. Needs a clean exit from the Chrysler. Little slide into eight. But again, safely through 10 into 11. And then 11, the exit here defines your speed at the finish line. Just a little rocky down into 12. Second best speed. He will lead at the line by 1400s, 55.01. Came down in 55.01 in the first heat. They started 400s quicker in the first heat. So the rough ruler Bob Slate, 400s advantage at the start, should be 1200s at the bottom. Law of three, but didn't find any of that. See, late on the outlet there, little tap, squared up going into the Chrysler. That leaves him a little high and late coming in on the first pressure. Now holding the steer, just keeping the sled where he wants it. And there is the exit from seven. Just a little late pressure drifting him into eight. So Seaman Friedley is our race leader with 12 sleds to go. And Friedley's previous best here was... Uh, hasn't had a four-man race here, that's why. Next up, Mihai Tenter also hasn't... Uh, has only raced at four-man here. In fact, the Romanian, Tenter with... One four-man race here previously. Didn't finish the second race. And so this is his second four-man World Cup. They were very pleased indeed with their start. 5.15. Not quite as tight to get in the second time. 5.17, but I'm sure they will take that. And Tentea, if you give him a good start and a quick sled, I think he's a top 10 driver. Still relatively inexperienced, only 22 years old. This is a track the Romanians are very familiar with. Big slide, though, from five to six. Best speed as he gets to the Chrysler. 96.6, tied with Jeff Godbois. 1,200 ahead of Seaman Friedley. He had 400 from the first heat. And his target is Roman Heinrich and Dominic Dvorak, who are just a few hundreds away with Evo de Brown. 800s better, 5497. Mm, well, he was 400s up from the first heat, finds the same margin in the second heat to go 800s ahead. And that will guarantee him a top 12 finish, his only previous four man World Cup finish, 16th place. So that is progress in the right direction. Well, 
good run for Mihai Tentea and second best speed at the Kreisel. Mihai Tentea, our race leader, with 11 sleds to go. And the team absolutely stoked with their getaway in the first heat, 5.15, seventh best in the field. And next up, Roman Heinrich and his crew, Lionel, Lionel Lefebvre, Alan Allais, and Steven Montenaka. Steven Montenaka in his first ever race in a four-man for France, previously a monogasque pusher. <laughs> Max Robert yelling them away at the top. Four-man medalist with Bruno Mijon in, in uh, World Cup racing. 5.17, that's a little better than their first heat. They tie the Romanians, and so their advantage remains alive at four hundredths of a second. Out of four, little nudge into five. Like a better run into the Kreisel. Best speed, 96.6. That's the same as the Romanians, same as Gadois. 95.7. Fastest there, Mikel Vogt at 95.9. Still in the green. The gap is out to six hundredths of a second. One error out of 11, for instance, will take it all away. Best speed, he will lead. Be no worse than 11th. 54-87, that's a tenth advantage over Mihai Tentea from this heat. And that is 600s better than his first heat. This track is so well known, it is very hard to make big differences if you've had a good first run. So 5.17 getaway from Roman Heinrich and the crew, they'll be happy with that. And the idea is for all four men to hurl every ounce of their body weight and power into the sled at exactly the same moment. The hit, it's called. Synchronizing that is almost as important as any other part of the start, other than making sure that four of you get into the sled. Not always a given, as we will see quite possibly in Samaritz next week. They seem to run forever in Samaritz and getting in it's not always most straightforward. Roman Heinrich, our race leader, with 10 sleds to go from Mihai Tentea and Seaman Friedley. The first four-man World Cup race of the season. A real disappointment for Great Britain's Brad Hall. He thought that he and her four-man crew here would have a genuine medal shot after training. But uh, with that... Hamstring pair pull for Nick Gleason in the second of our pushes in the two-man yesterday. Unfortunately, their alternates are not here. So they will, well, they were scheduled, Sam Blanchett and Luke Dawes, to be turning up for Sam Moritz next week. And unfortunate timing means there was no alternate and a three-man sled is not a thing. So Brad and the team, unfortunately, having to make their travel arrangements and head off to Samaritz for next week. There are the Romanians, Mihai Tentea, not the tallest of athletes, as you'll see, but that does mean in his defense that you can pack a lot more muscle in the back. Little view over the town of Winterberg. So no Brad Hall, no Lamin Dean. The Jamaicans, we hope to be back uh, later in our World Cup campaign for Koenigsegg and the final race, which will be back in Innsbruck. They are currently earning their spurs in four-man and two-man in Europa Cup races to get their full World Cup spot for four-man. Roman Heinrich, Lionel Lefebvre, Alain Allais and Steven Mondenaka leading for France with 10 sleds to go. And this is a very tight group from Mihai Tentea in 12th up to Ivo de Brown in 9th and Patrick Baumgartner in 8th. They were only 11 hundredths of a second. And for comparison, as I always say, blinking a human eye takes 7 hundredths of a second. So can you imagine they all came down the hill together? Trying to define who was ahead with a stopwatch would be all but impossible. And that's why, uh, thanks to uh, Swiss Timing, 
we have the chance to split everything to the hundredth. Final 10 sleds race one of the BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh World Cup in Winterberg in Germany. A late start to the four-man season. Dominic Dvorak, the man at the top of the hill. Roman Heinrich, the current leader between the two of them. Just five hundredths of a second. They're in a group of five sleds covered by nine, by 11 hundredths. 514 getaway, 100 slower than their first heat. The French went 300 quicker, and that negates the gap between them. 514 start. Borjak, neat and tidy through the first few corners. They didn't have the neatest load in the first heat. Sixth best speed, he's only 400s up, the gap is coming down. Watch if it goes from green to blue, that's a dead heat. If it goes from green to red, Dvorak's time, that's when he drops behind. Running out of ice to lose this though, 100th in front, final corner. Only the fourth best speed, how close will he be? He's behind by 200s. Roman Heinrich and his crew had the best speed in the final turn. And as a result, Dominic Dvorak, two hundredths of a second behind. He is in second, ahead of Mihai Tentea. Dvorak, as in the two-man race, just shaking his head a little, not getting the best out of this track yesterday or today. I think he was expecting more. Top 10 finish would have been very nice. It always sounds better than 11th, doesn't it? So, Dvorak, best here, three seventh place finishes. And last year in the world, in the European Championships, seventh place was a top six in the Europeans for him. Next up, Ivo de Brown of the Netherlands, second of our starters in the first heat. Best here, an 11th place finish in race two, December 2018, two years ago. He is in ninth place after the first of our two heats. His advantage over Roman Heinrich, six hundredths of a second. And they start 5.21, so the gap is out to seven hundredths of a second. Well, it would have been if Heinrich hadn't started quicker. So the Brown is going to have to drive himself into the lead now. That started by the French crew. Joost at two, having his first race of the season. Dennis Venker and Janko Francic have both been on the two-man sleds. Best speed so far, just 100 behind. This is going to be very close, from 200 up to 100 behind. Coming back down, tying. Needs better speed than the French sled, 135.4. That's the fastest of all, but how does he give it away? Best speed into the final corner, but it's a long uphill drag to the line through the finish curve, and they come out in third place, just 500s back, because Dominic Dvorak was 200s behind Roman Heinrich. That's a disappointment. He's in third with eight to go. His best result here, 11th place two years ago. He will be no worse than 11th, so he will tie a Winterberg personal best, but he was on for his first ever Winterberg four-man top 10 result. That might need a little bit of help from the sleds that are coming in front of him. So he's getting a, a coaching debrief there from Roman Heinrich. Well, the man who might help Ivo de Brown get a top 10 result is Patrick Baumgartner. 700s in hand over Roman Heinrich. Baumgartner in eighth place after the first heat. A really good first run from the driver. And a good start, 522 from Eric Fantazzini, who was on the two-man sled yesterday. Constantino Ugi and Alex Vergina. The other brakemen have also raced this season in two-man. We've had nine two-man races already this year. So, Baumgartner has kept his brakemen healthy and busy. Big bump off corners here, they weren't settled. 
They overran it a little. 519 start, and I think that is giving it away. It's 500s in front of Roman Heinrich as he sat down, 700s in front from the first heat, but now he is in the red. And the top three are covered by 500s. At the moment, this is only a fourth place run. It would still be very comfortably his best race here. His previous best 19th last year after failing to make the cut in the first day's action. 400s back. Can he bring it back? Second best speed. He's not going to lead, but he is third ahead of Evo de Brown by a hundredth. And that leaves him with seven sleds to go in the top 10 in the World Cup race for the first ever time. His previous World Cup best was 14th. He's currently gutted that he didn't hold the lead, but that is his best ever World Cup finish in four man, his first ever top 10 result. But well, it's a big step forward in 12 months for Baumgartner. Yes, he'll be kicking himself all the way for the rest of the day for mistakes here. Look how long the crew take to load. And then they bounce all the way over the zero curve. Now Baumgarten has dropped in. The sled takes a skid and watch the runners there, he corrects. But it's all too late. They hit zero hard and frankly, running six steps fewer they'd have had the same velocity out of zero. But Patrick Baumgartner, a top 10 finish for the first time in his career. Seven sleds to go in Winterberg, Germany. Alexei Stulnev with Roman Koshelev, Vasily Kondratenko and Igor Gryatsnov. The youngster in the crew, the baby-faced Gryatsnov. 40 seconds. But in four man for Koshela, 45th for Kondratenko, second for the brakeman Gryatsnov. And still there, 41st four man World Cup race, but he's only off oh, and again all over the zero curve. 515, they're desperately trying to catch their teammate Rostislav Gajtukovic, who's 1200s quicker in the first heat, but again ran it too deep, didn't have control, bounced off zero. Well, he had a handy advantage over our current leader, Roman Heinrich of France. And he's just adding to that a little. I think Heinrich's progress up the leaderboard has been halted. Still there, easing out to 3,400s away, skidding sideways there though, and he's late. And just gets it all under control, but to what cost, steering hard there. Across the line in a 54-7-4. He came down 54-7-1 in the first heat. He has the lead. It was only 200s behind Hansi Lochner, but things to think about. It is a top seven result guaranteed, however. And his best result here, fourth place in race two last January. Not matching that right now. And the mistake in the zero curve is what really crippled their speed. Late off five as well, big skid, put him late into the Chrysal. And here off 11, all at sixes and sevens, brought it down early, and that meant late upper runner pressure, pushed him up the wall on the exit, and then suddenly he's halfway on to 12 before he's even started to make the turn. Alexei Stulnev, Roman Heinrich, Dominic Dvorak, the top three with six sleds to go. Janis Lochner of Germany, the last man to win on this track in a four-man sled in World Cup racing. That's when he claimed his fourth consecutive four-man European gold. Little better run through the zero curve this time off a 5.13 start. 2100s from any medal here. That is a massive amount to try and find in one heat on this track. It is a proper mountain to climb, but he's gone from 400s to 1300s ahead of Stulnev. Much better run out of the zero curve for Lochner. That's what really was trying.
tripped him at the beginning of the first heat. Little skiddy, down into nine. Needs a big exit from corner 11. Close through and across the line, 54-65 compared to 54-69. Better, but not great. I said before, really hard to make any major advantage on this track, never mind the two tenths that he needed. 5.13 to start for Johannes Lochner, Florian Bauer, Christopher Weber, and Christian Rusp. Not a happy man, Hansi. Florian Bauer, his last four-man race was in the World Championships. That was his last bobsleigh race of any kind. In fact, the World Championships at the end of February 2020. So it's been 11 long months without a race. So Lochner, the leader, with five to go, stalks away. Not going to be overjoyed with this. Will he even be the second of our German sleds? Ahead of him after the first heat by nine hundredths of a second was Christoph Hafer. Hafer one hundredth behind Gaichukovic of Russia. And 12, I beg your pardon, 22 hundredths away from the medals. Kevin Corona behind him, Christian Hammers and Philip Verbeto. Verbeto on the brakes again, having his first race in nearly 12 months. 5.13 to get away and a decent run through zero. Eight hundreds up on Johannes Lochner. The gap between them from the first heat was nine hundreds. This is going to be very close to be the second German sled. Fourth best speed. Gaps down to four hundreds. Second best speed. He's rallying a little. Long skid down into 11. They're level on time. He's going behind. He needs better speed at the bottom. Only the eighth best. I think Lochner's got it. He does. Not that it'll be any consolation. Hansi must have woken up this morning determined to take a fifth straight four-man European gold. But he does not have that opportunity, I don't think. Christoph Harfer in second. Johannes Lochner, the leader. 200s between them. Well, the start was better, 5.13. Just too many little errors creeping in, the tail wagging the dog. All of that mass behind the pivot point at the front of the sled means that there is a lot of momentum. When the sled starts to walk, you have to work hard to keep it under control. Only the eighth best speed, but his... Scrambling through the lower labyrinth is probably the reason for that. So Hansi Lochner leads from this man, Christoph Harfer, with four to go. This could be a huge day for Rostislav Gajcukovic, the 26-year-old Russian, 26, with uh, Mikhail Morosov, Ilya Malik, and Ruslan Samatov behind him. Third ever World Cup start in a four-man. He's only raced four-man here in the World Cup races in Winterberg. He was 12th and 9th last year. 5.06, that is a big start from this crew. Ilya Malik, the 29-year-old at three, has 36 World Cup starts in four-man. They have packed this sled with talent to back up Gajcukovic. 21 hundreds up on Hansi Lochner, who's only one tenth ahead from the first heat. This could be the Russian shooting for a medal. The last Russian to take a medal on this track was over a decade ago, Alexander Zubkov. In fact, 2012-13 season, nearly a decade ago. Gajcukovic leaves Lochner. Trailing in his wake, 54-49.
A tenth better than his first heat. Well, I thought he kind of liked his first heat. I'm not sure about the second. Well, how would you gauge that reaction? That's the Russian for get in. Rostislav Gajtukovic, fastest start we've seen so far. And the best escape velocity. How long before this man is a real thorn in the side of anybody who wants to win a race in World Cup. In two-man and four-man, he really seems to be the real deal. Three sleds to go. Gajtukovic has thrown down a gauntlet. Benny Meyer, bronze medalist yesterday, in the bronze medal position after our first heat. 21 hundredths of a second ahead of Gajtukovic. He must just focus on his own job now, not worry about what anybody else is doing. Nice load from the crew, 507. They go 200s quicker, just as the Russians did. He and Marcus Sammer started gangbusters in the two-man race yesterday, got a bronze and European bronze as a result. And a huge start as well, third fastest start in the first heat. That may well be the third fastest in the second heat. 2200s up. Benny, a great pair of hands. And this could see him march to a second bronze medal in a weekend on this track. And I'm not sure he's done that before. He was third here in race one in the 17-18 season. And he is on his way to a bronze medal here again. He leads by 1900s. Rostislav Kajtukovic's time will come. But for now, Hans-Josef Hoffmann and Wolfgang Stamper are absolutely thrilled, and so are the crew. A second bronze medal guaranteed in the same weekend. Benny Meyer is really back to his best. Great starting from the crew, great driving from the driver. Uh, it's all going well for Benny Meyer here in Winterberg this weekend. He got a European gold, uh, bronze medal yesterday. Katty Bile got a European bronze medal yesterday, her second. The third for Austrian women's bobsledding. Guy Chukovic offers his congratulations. And Benny, yeah, saying hi to wife Liz and baby Hendrix watching at home in, or in their hotel, I guess. Justin Cripps, Ryan Summer, Cam Stones, and Ben Cokewell. The last time we saw them in a World Cup race was in San Moritz last year. They won it, but they're 2400s away from gold here. But returning to action, a silver medal would be awesome. 508, they find what they need. Third best start in this heat. 900s ahead of Benny Meyer. The gap's coming down, 800s. There'll be a lot of Austrians now, barely daring to breathe. Fritz has stabilized the ship. 900s in front of the Kreisel. He had a really good first heat. Good speed as well, 96.5. That's as quick as anybody has been. And Cripps is going to throw down a huge run here. 1,700s up. He's going to take at least a silver medal, probably only a silver medal. But that is a great run from Justin Cripps. First four-man race since Samaritz last year. And they are in the medals. Well, it's been a long wait for Canada, the USA, to get back to World Cup racing. They spent the whole of the first half of the season watching their rivals and friends competing in the World Cup, frustrated at the inability to make the travel over to Europe. But now they are here, 
And the Canadians are back with a vengeance. Great starts, great load, and great driving by Justin Cripps. He was looking forward to the four-man race. They got a good draw as well, fifth on the ice in the first heat, and boy, did they make use of it. But, well, this to be the greatest bobsleigh driver in male bobsleigh history. 45 World Cup wins. This is aiming for win number 46. Kevin Kuska has 46 gold medals as a brakeman. Sandra Kiriasis, 46 wins as a driver. The great Andre Langer, 45 wins. That mark was tied yesterday by Francesco Friedrich. With Torsten Margus, Candy Bell, a star record. He goes for everything he can get. Wasn't expecting that after the first start, but they have tied the start record. No, haven't they broken the start record? Torsten Margus, Candy Bell, and Alexander Schiller, so much a part of the success of this sled. And Francesco Friedrich, just one of the greatest sportsmen you will see in action. And he still makes mistakes, could still improve. He is just getting better and better and better. Half a second clear of the field. What's the margin of victory? Is the track record in danger? It's not. It escapes. But a 54-09. He wins going away by nearly six tenths of a second. And a new start record. Well, he and Torsten Margus were chasing the start record yesterday. They came up a couple of hundred shy. But that four-man record that has stood since 2014 to Oscars Melbardis, Damas Jeskins, Arvis Vilkaster and Janis Stranger now belongs to Francesco Friedrich, Torsten Margus, Candy Bauer and Alexander Schuler. Handing out the rainbow hats left, right and centre to the boys. There's Alex Schuler and Francesco Friedrich. Well, we head next week to Sam Moritz. With 46 wins, he has tied Sandra Kiriasis and Kevin Kuska as the most medalled World Cup bobsledders ever. And perhaps fittingly, when we go back to the home of the sport, the longest, the fastest, and the only natural track next week, he has every chance of becoming the greatest of all time. The place that would be to do it. And what a sportsman, whether he wins or he loses, he's genuinely happy to be there doing what he does. Justin Cripps, a fantastic return, takes a silver. And Benny Meyer, what a weekend for Austrian bobsledding. Bronze in the two-man, bronze in the four-man, and bronze yesterday for Katy Bile as well. Three European bronze medals for them. Rostislav Gajcukovic, close, closer, closer. Can't be long before he's on the podium, surely. PB for Patrick Baumgartner, equal PB for Evo de Brown. But this man equals what anybody has ever done in World Cup bobsled racing up until this stage with his 46th career win. It is win number 31. I beg your pardon, win, uh, uh, yeah, win number 12 in a four man sled. 12 wins, nine silver, and eight bronze. And this is just World Cup races we're talking about. This is not what he did before in Europa Cup, in Junior World Championships, not what he's done in World Championships and Olympic Games. This is just his World Cup career. So he claims victory here from Cripps and Maya. Gajtukovic, Lochner and Harfer complete the top six ahead of Stolnev, Heinrich, Dvorak and Baumgartner rounding out the top ten, his best ever four-man result. In fact, I think it's his only bobsled top 10. Eva de Brown, Mihai Tentia, Siebel Freely, Mikhail Vogt, and Cody Bascu and Jeff Godbois back for the USA. No start, I'm afraid, for Brad Hall after his brakeman pulled a hamstring in yesterday's two man race. And in terms of the European Championships, of course, we take Justin Cripps out, so Benny Meyer doesn't get a bronze, he gets a silver. Hadn't thought about that for too long. And Rostislav Gajcukovic gets the European bronze medal. Russia had gold in both men and women's skeleton. 
And they get a bronze medal in the four-man bobsleigh as well. Hansi Lochner just misses out on a European medal. Those are the other European finishers. So bronze yesterday for the two-man and the women's bobsled and silver today in the European Championships for Austria. So what a fantastic day of four-man racing. We will be back in action with two-man and four-man, with women and with the monobob, with men and women's skeleton next week from Samaritz. It's a busy program, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, two races each. Until then, from me, Martin Haven, from the IBSF TV crew in Winterberg, thanks for being with us, stay safe, and whatever else you do, join us in beautiful Samaritz next weekend.